for joining me. As a lifelong resident of Howard County, I know firsthand that we are an inclusive and diverse county. I was raised by a man who fought in the Civil Rights Movement right here in Howard County, and he taught me to respect everyone. I know that the employees in Howard County treat everyone who lives and visits the county with respect and dignity. And that's why it's unfortunate that I have to stand before you today. Throughout this process, I have said that Council Bill 9, which the County Council amended and passed last night, is a bad solution to a problem that does not exist in Howard County. It is little more than a hollow political statement. It unnecessarily divided our foreign-born community and caused rifts in our county. The bill offers a false sense of security to undocumented immigrants, compromises public safety efforts, and puts us at risk for losing critical federal funding for community services and law enforcement. For these reasons, I will veto Council Bill 9 when it comes to my desk. I should also let you know that standing with me today uh, is Chief Administrative Officer Lonnie Robbins to my far left, Police Chief Gary Gardner, uh, Director of the Department of Community Resources and Services Steve Bullock, and Deputy Director Jackie Scott. I want them up here because our Police Department and our Department of Community Resources and Services are the departments that most have impact with people in our community. And I can guarantee you that these two departments do all they can to respect everyone regardless of their immigration status. So I want to make sure everyone knows that we're here united to explain that to the folks in Howard County. I can tell you it was irresponsible to hastily file this legislation. Responsible leadership calls for due diligence. Unfortunately, in this case, there was none. I agree with Councilmember John Weinstein, who said last night when voting against the bill, that this issue deserved a thorough, inclusive, and deliberate process prior to its introduction. I appreciate Council Members Weinstein and Fox for their bipartisan opposition to this bill. If the sponsors had reached out to key stakeholders prior to filing the legislation, they would have learned that it was unnecessary. They would have heard from the police department, other government agencies, and organizations supporting immigrants that in Howard County, we do not have a problem with this issue. They would have learned why codifying this language creates problems, and they would have understood why no other county in Maryland, nor Baltimore City, has passed a similar law. Instead, Council Members Ball and Terrassa filed this legislation without consulting and without notice to key stakeholders. They filed legislation that unfairly and inaccurately created the perception that there is a problem in Howard County with the way our police department and county employees interact with our foreign-born population. Let me be clear, nothing could be further from the truth. There are no known instances, not a single one, in which a member of our community has indicated that they were harassed or mistreated by the police department or county government employees based upon their immigration status. The mission of our police department to ensure that everyone who lives, works, or visits Howard County is safe has never changed. Their focus is on protecting our community and not on enforcing federal immigration law. In fact, they have gone above and beyond to work with people of all nationalities, creating partnerships with FERN, which is the Foreign Born Information Referral Network, Hope Works, which is our Sexual Assault Domestic Violence Center, and others so that our police officers have adequate training and understanding of different cultures and religions. We've hired multicultural liaisons to help with outreach and to strengthen relationships. This dedication to inclusiveness runs through the fabric of our county government. And we have a county government that represents our community's diversity, working every day to make sure our services are comprehensive and accessible. To imply otherwise is simply insulting. Our priorities and policies are driven by shared values of inclusion, collaboration, and opportunity. These are the guiding principles that led to efforts like our Hashtag One Howard campaign and Congressman Elijah Cummings' Stand Up, Speak Up Howard campaign. In the face of acts of hatred and bigotry, responsible leaders on the local, state, and federal level have engaged in the community have engaged the community, promoted dialogue, and sought solutions that are impactful without causing greater anxiety in the community. You can see I'm kind of uh, 
comparing what Congressman Cummings and I did to what the sponsors did in this case. At the end of the day, we know that we are a stronger, more prosperous county because we, excuse me, we welcome new people, new ideas, and new opportunities. We recognize that local government can and should continue its efforts to strengthen interactions with the foreign-born community. And so we will continue to work with FERN, HopeWorks, Maryland Legal Aid, and engage our law enforcement partners, the state's attorney and the sheriff, to strengthen our joint outreach and training efforts. I know that there is some uncertainty right now on the federal level that has caused concern among a lot of people in Howard County. But there should be no uncertainty in Howard County. My administration will continue to champion and preserve our values and treat every resident with dignity and respect. My promise as county executive is that Howard County will continue to be a welcoming and inclusive community where we celebrate our diversity. Thank you very much. And I don't know if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to find. Yep. Mr. County Executive, I understand there are some discussions over the weekend and even leading up to last night about some sort of compromise or an alternative bill. Uh, can you talk about your involvement in that and what maybe you could have supported? Uh, there, there was no talk of an alternative bill. I think the, the folks who I had discussions with this weekend all understood that there was no need for a bill. Um, but there were discussions about trying to come together with a, uh, a somewhat of a compromise statement to try to show people uh, what we believe. That didn't come through. Uh, but all I can say right now is I appreciate the bipartisan support that I received from Councilman Weinstein and, and Fox, and, and I've certainly been supporting them as well. Uh, and, you know, we'll go forward. Uh, Howard County, I'm so, Howard County is such a great place. I've lived here all my life. And people in Howard County treat each other with respect and dignity. And I can tell you, the county government, I've served in the local level in the, in the county council, I've served in the state level in the state senate. In Howard County, I've represented this county for 19 years in some level. Always our county employees have treated people with respect. Always. And it just really bothers me that somebody would come out and make it imply that we're not doing that. And I can tell you, I've talked to a lot of immigration advocates, and they, everyone tells me there's not a problem in Howard County. Anybody else? What's next? I mean, is this dead or, uh, you know, uh, with your veto? I mean, what's, what's, what do you think is going to happen next? What's the process? What's going to happen next when the bill comes to me? It hasn't come to me yet. I will veto it. I'm announcing that today. And then it will be back in the hands of the council. They can make the decision if they want to try to override or not. Uh, it's out of my control. And have you ever seen an issue? Are you surprised at, at how uh, controversial this was or how many people came out, crammed the city council meetings? I mean, are you uh, surprised at the reaction that's, that's bubbled up over this? I will say I'm more, un I'm more disappointed in the reaction. I'm disappointed that the sponsors let this happen when they could have easily avoided it by just talking to us, coming to us ahead of time. Talking to the police chief, talking to immigration advocates, they would have realized, as I said in my statement, that there isn't a problem. And so you don't have to rush and file legislation. I don't know what their motives were for filing the legislation, but it seems to me that even Councilman Weinstein was saying, you should have sat down and talked to people first. And then maybe you would have learned that there isn't this problem in Howard County. And if we need to work together on something, let's get together and work together. Let's not file legislation and ask questions later. Let's ask questions before we file legislation. Seeing how many What's your message to those? Uh, my message is saying that I just said. Howard County does not have a problem. Uh, I can understand folks who are concerned about the federal level, and that might be why some people are opposing this. But this bill, as I believe Councilman Weinstein said last night as well, gives a false sense of security to people. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be treating people with respect and making sure they understand uh, what's going on. But in Howard County, there's no uncertainty. There has never been anyone, as I said earlier, who's come to us and said, the police department or the Department of Community Resources and Services has treated me unfairly because of my immigration status. Not one time. So why would you file legislation when there hasn't been one instance of a problem? I just wish they would have asked and they would have gotten that. Yeah. When do you expect to get the bill? It's up to them. I, would expect, I thought maybe today, probably maybe tomorrow, I don't know. But once it comes, it'll get back down there as soon as possible without my signature, but it'll veto. We've already heard uh, Councilman Fox is talking about if they do override the veto, he's mm -hmm. already heard from people that they would try to take it to a referendum. If it's overridden, I've heard that there would be no question to be taken to a referendum. Uh, there are so many people who are disappointed in this legislation that I've, I've not, going back to the question earlier, I have not seen this type of response to legislation in my, in my career. And I, I have no doubt that we go to referendum. So we'll see what happens. If it gets overridden, I'm sure that'll happen. 
Anybody else? No? Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, one That's more. okay. Uh, you mentioned the uncertainty um, in the community about mm -hmm. um, the president's executive order that's yeah. being challenged. Um, what is your personal opinion on the executive order? You know, my job is to make sure that everybody in Howard County is safe. And that's what Chief Gardner's job is, and that's what all of our job as county employees and people who serve the public. You know, all I can tell everybody is, regardless of what's happening at the federal level, in Howard County, you need not worry about what we're doing. We're going to continue to treat everybody with respect and dignity, no matter what their status is, immigration-wise or any-wise. I mean, we treat every person in Howard County with respect, and then we're going to continue to do that. Thank you very much.